the anthology format has always been a perfect home for horror. From the early days of Eerie TV with shows like Alfred Hitchcock Presents and The Twilight Zone to big screen terrors, from Hammer Horror and Amicus to bona fide classics like Creep Show and Trick or Treat, it's an excellent format in which to dispense multiple offerings of mayhem to the audience. Horror is sometimes sweetest when ingested in small bites, so a 10 to 15 minute tale might end up being much more effective than a full on feature. And the best part, if one story's a dud, there's always three or four more to help pick up the slack. The tricky part is getting them all on the same page. Even if you're dealing with completely different ideas and characters, a consistent tone is always crucial. The aforementioned Creep Show is a perfect example of a movie that always knows exactly what style it's going for and what reactions it wants to elicit. Horror anthologies can be fun all right, but once in a while you get one so grim and gruesome that fun isn't exactly the best way to describe it. <laughs> the one that comes to mind is From a Whisper to a Scream, also known as The Offspring. I want to thank you guys for watching the best horror movie you never saw and ask that if you enjoy our shows, please subscribe to our channel right now. Like the video and click on the bell so you can be notified each time a new video goes up. Now, back to the show. Here's a movie that you definitely need to follow up with a shower and a rom-com, but on the plus side, there isn't a dud to be found here. This is absolutely one of the best horror movies you never saw. And if you have seen it, it's time for a revisit, because it's too damn lurid to let slip through the cracks. <laughs> Directed by Jeff Burr, who co-wrote and produced with his old friends when they were all in their early 20s, From a Whisper to a Scream, is set in the town of Oldfield, the home of a particularly nasty history filled with voodoo, madness, and murder. Our guide, if you will, through some of the town's sordid past is none other than Vincent Price in one of his final film roles. The story goes, Burr and his friends decided on a whim to visit Price at his LA home and hand deliver the script to him, which eventually resulted in him accepting the role. He's not in it a whole lot, but any Vincent Price is better than none, especially in a film like this. I'll drink to those two masters of horror. While it will never be mistaken for one of his best performances, Price brings his trademarked charisma and shrewdness to the role of Julian White, Old Fields historian who knows all of the dirty little secrets of the place. And it's a good thing he's not a local realtor too, because he would be hard pressed to sell a house in a place where such depraved supernatural mayhem is the norm. Relaying his tales of terror to a journalist who allegedly wants to know more about the town's history, Julian is our host of sorts, and he truly has a ghastly array of characters to introduce us to. <laughs> First up, Stanley Burnside. A strange fellow whose relationship with his sister is, well, complex. Okay, it's just plain gross. But distracting him from that is a co-worker he pines for, one who understandably wants nothing to do with the weirdo. His yearning quickly escalates into something much, much worse. Let's just say murdering the object of his affection isn't even the worst thing Stanley does to her. But he gets his just desserts nine months later when he finds out, nine months later, that he's a brand new daddy. Yeah, you heard that correctly. What a way to begin this morbid quartet of stories. As Stanley, veteran character actor Clue Gulliger is effectively off-putting and the entire short has an off-the-charts ick factor. Try not to watch this one with someone you love. The next short revolves around another unsavory fellow. Jesse, a small-time crook looking for a port in a storm after being shot by local criminals. He finds help in the form of Felder Evans, a congenial host who revives Jesse with some good old-fashioned backwoods voodoo. Not being appreciative sort, Jesse wants to know more about this power since it would appear Felder holds the secret to immortality. Jesse leaves his host for dead, but things don't go his way, to put it lightly, when he finds out the hard way 
that he's already going to have to live for a very long time. That wouldn't be such bad news, but unfortunately, he's brutally punished for his attempted murder and left in really, really bad shape for the next 70 plus years of his life. This segment is a mean one, and even though we don't like Jesse very much throughout it, his fate is so cruel that we have to sympathize with him just a little. He's played by Terry Kaiser, Bernie Lomax himself, and at the end of the day, Jesse would likely much spend the rest of his days as a propped up corpse, then sit in a hospital bed as a maimed and incinerated husk. Things aren't gonna get much happier with the next tale, which focuses on the brief and doomed love affair between Oldfield resident Amaryllis and traveling sideshow performer Steven. Steven is one of those freaks who can ingest seemingly anything, nuts and bolts, broken glass, razor blades, an unhealthy diet that will ultimately lead to a severe case of indigestion. The carnival is ruled with an iron fist by the snake woman who doesn't take kindly to her performance fraternizing in such a way, so she warns the love-struck Steven to knock it off or he'll find those objects he's eaten coming back to haunt him. Naturally, you can't put a leash on true love. Steven and Amaryllis attempt to run off into the sunset, but thanks or no thanks once again to the power of voodoo, the honeymoon is short-lived, ending in a very painful looking and bloody sequence that will make your skin crawl. Anyone hoping for a happy ending to any of these stories should know by now that these are some particularly ugly tales without a speck of light at the end of the tunnel. While the two leads are appropriately wholesome and adorable together, Rosalind Cash makes a devastating impression as a vindictive and truly evil woman. And cool and gnarly as that finale is, it's undoubtedly disturbing to watch this cute young couple get torn apart so viciously. The other thing that works well here is the larger world that's only hinted at amongst the carnies. This segment, more than any of the others, would be pretty effective as a standalone movie. There's real intrigue to be found in the brief bits of carnival life we see. Nightmare Alley looks like a dream compared to this creepy sideshow. And finally, we go way back in time to learn the origin of Old Field, which is of course a fittingly gruesome one. At the end of the Civil War, a ragged band of Union soldiers find out the horrors of war extends beyond the battlefield when they happen upon an enclave of rebellious children. Yes, this is evil kid territory. Although it's pretty hard to root for the soldiers based on their brutish behavior, these kids are seeking revenge for the unceremonious slaughter of their Confederate parents, giving the Union boys a welcome that is pretty much the opposite of Southern hospitality. It's not hard to see how Old Field became a hotbed of supernatural turmoil when the Founding Fathers were bloodthirsty children. In keeping with the rest of the segments, this finale is morose and morbid, and although if the sight of little kids turning a dismembered body into a piñata delights you, hey, this has been your kind of party. This segment features yet another reliable old actor, Cameron Mitchell, who had been in roughly well, 1,000 movies over his long career, Best known for playing baddies, he strikes a pretty loathsome figure here, even going so far as to kill a sweet little girl. Really, the only kid in town who isn't a total lunatic. That sentence alone should give you a good idea of what kind of film we're talking about here. If it's not obvious by now, from a whisper to a scream's main attribute is its inherent darkness. If you go in expecting something campy in the style of Tales from the Crypt, you're barking up the wrong tree. Oldfield is a pretty unforgiving place, and the stories that take place are grotesque and harrowing. Frankly, this is one 80s flick that could have used a sequel. There should be a few more yarns in the town's history books worth hearing. The film's low budget actually adds to the gloomy atmosphere and the entire cast is more than up for the task of bringing these malignant characters to life. And if you're in it for the gore, fear not, because the movie delivers with some impressively ghoulish effects that will satisfy the gore hounds everywhere. Monster babies, limb hacking, exploding bodies, eyeball removal. This is not at all for the squeamish amongst you. Though you probably shouldn't be watching a movie called From a Whisper to a Scream, 
if you're squeamish. Director Jeff Burr went on to direct some forgettable sequels like The Stepfather 2, Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3, and a couple of Puppet Master movies. He worked steadily throughout the 90s, but for our money, From a Whisper to a Scream is the undisputed highlight of his career. Considering it was more or less his first feature film, it's an impressively mounted effort, striking just the right tones of dread and suspense while moving at a very swift pace. Anthologies can usually be counted on to be hit and miss, but Burr and his friends didn't miss once here. From a whisper to a scream is as nightmarish as they come. Won't you take a trip to Oldfield today? Plenty of available real estate, surprisingly cheap, with more than a few colorful locals to make your stay a memorable one. Just don't plan on staying long. <laughs>